it's Thursday and it's time for Bible study. Amen. And as usual, the purpose of our Bible study is to encourage the people of God with the word of God. Amen. And a study from the New Living Translation. Please get your pencils and your papers and get ready because today's topic is plucked from the fire. Plucked from the fire. I raise my hands and I say, thank you, God, that you plucked me from the fire because I was sure hell bent. Amen. But for God, plucked from the fire. And so our first topic, our first scripture, I should say today is going to be 1 John 1, 9. It says, but if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Amen. Plucked from the fire. We see in Romans chapter as my computer freezes here, we see in Romans chapter 4, verse 13 to 25. I'm going to read this for us. It says, for the promise that he said, let me back up. I'm getting excited because I just love this topic. Romans 4, 13 to 25 says, for the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be hearers, faith is made void and the promise made of none effect. Because the law worketh the wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by, it might be by grace to the end. The promise might be sure to all the, all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God who quickened the dead, and called those things which be not as though they were. Verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, shall, so shall thy seed be. Verse 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Plucked from the fire. We have a responsibility as well. And that's to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And that he died for us. And we have to accept the free gift of everlasting life that Jesus offers. When he went to the cross shed his blood and died. Amen. That's the way we become plucked from the fire. If we have not done that, then we are hell bent and there's no other way to get to the father, but through the son. First Peter two and 10 says, once you had no identity as a people, now you're God's people. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy plucked from the fire. First Peter 3, 12 says, the eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right and his ears are open to their prayers, but the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. We see in 1 John 12 and 13, but to all who believe him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. 
They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So our identity is now, as I discussed last week, who you are. I had to reiterate this because I wanted you to know that when you get plucked from the fire, your identity is in Christ now. We need to realize that our identity needs to be in Christ. Plucked from the fire. God loves you. Jesus Christ died for you. That's why we have the story of the cross. Amen. We have been plucked out of the fire. If left to our own devices, we would be on the way to hell. If we believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, that he went to the cross and died for us, then we, that we are redeemed. Then we, we, we believe also that Christ paid the price. We are now plucked from the fire. We need to realize that being plucked from the fire is where we really want to be. Ephesians 1 and 5 says, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure. We discussed this as well last week. I wanted to see you all to see the connection, how the identity of who you are in Christ comes together. Romans 6, 6 says, we know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. Come on, somebody. Remember what you feed grows and what you starve dies. If you feed your sinful side of your nature, then you will remain in sin. If you starve that side of your nature and feed the side of your nature that is of God, that wants to stay in the path that leads to heaven, that wants to grow and mature, then it will grow. What you feed will grow and what you starve will die. What are you doing, children of God? Can God count on you to make the right decisions and the right choices? Let's take a look at 1 Corinthians 12, 27. All of you together are Christ's body and each of you is a part of it. So we all are connected by the fact that we're now related when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We can do all the things we are big and bad enough to do, amen? We have to know that all people everywhere has everlasting life. The issue is some goes to everlasting punishment and the other goes to everlasting joy with God. No more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. And that's Revelations 21, 4. If you have never asked Jesus Christ to come into your life and confess your sins and repent it and believe that he's the son of God and coming back again soon for you, now is the appointed time. In other words, brothers and sisters, stop playing, stop um, shucking and jiving, as they would say, bobbing and weaving, Acting like you know you saved and you know you're not, you did not ask Jesus Christ into your life. Now is the time to come clean, to confess, to repent, and ask the Spirit of God to move in and occupy your heart and help you to make the right decisions and to help you to grow to look more like Christ. You see what's going on out there. Why would you even put this off another minute? We see in Isaiah 41, 10, the Bible says, don't be afraid for I am with you. Don't be discouraged for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. There is nothing too big or too hard or impossible for God. So think about where you want to be. Smoking or not. 
Hell is described as eternal fire. That's Matthew 25, 41. Unquenchable fire, Matthew 3, 12. Everlasting destruction, 2 Thessalonians 1, 9. Lake of burning sulfur, Revelations 20, 10. Where the wicked are tormented day and night forever and ever. So, my brother, my sisters, again, smoking or none. You can choose by the decisions that you make. You can be plucked from the fire. Or you can stay on the course that you're on. You can fool some of the people some of the time. Most of the people most of the time. But you can't fool God or all the people all the time. Amen? The way to hell is to reject Jesus Christ as Lord. We are invited to accept Jesus Christ as our Savior and know that he had paid the price for our sins. Psalms 32, 8 says, The Lord says, I will guide you along the best path for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Now, this is the great I am that's saying that to you. And he's not a man that he should lie. As we discussed last week, I showed you several scriptures that confirm that. So if he says in his word that I will guide you along the best path for your life, I will advise you and watch over you. And we know God only wants what's best for us. What could possibly stop us? from making that commitment to Christ. We need to realize that he is watching and waiting and nothing is more important to him than you coming home and accepting the free gift of everlasting life that Jesus Christ went to the cross to purchase for you. So let's think about it. So it's easy as ABC, accepting, believing, and confessing. So we're going to do the sinner's prayer. You're going to say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner. I need Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. I repent. I come to you right now. I believe that Jesus Christ is coming back for me, and he is the Son of God. Forgive me in Jesus' name. It's as easy as that. Believe in your heart and be sincere. And know that God has heard you and has accepted your prayer and is responding and is coming into your heart. It is easy as that to be plucked from the fire. Psalms 37, 23 and 24 says, The steps of a man are established by the Lord. When he delights in his way, though he fall, he shall not be cast headlong for the Lord upholds his hand. That's what happens when we are saved and we allow God to lead us. He will establish our way. And if we fall, he will uphold us with his hand. Plucked from the fire. We all need to confess and to repent I know that we all been through this. Everybody has to do it. If you want to have everlasting life with God, if you want the everlasting hell and damnation, then continue on the way you are. Plucked from the fire. Make sure you share this to everybody that you know. Everyone, because we can't see everybody's heart, but God does. Some people are jucking and jiving, as I said, and not really confessing. And we need them to confess that we can all be together in heaven one day. We don't know how soon that's going to be. That's not our job to know. Our job to know is to spread the word and to be a light in a dark area. Amen? Plucked from the fire. Who do you know that might need to hear a word on today to be plucked from the fire? So now we're going to go to prayer. Amen? We're going to pray today for these people that I have on my list. And if you want me to pray for anyone else that you have on your list, drop, them, drop, drop it in my inbox and I'll be happy to do so. Amen. 
Share, share, share. So now we're going to go to prayer. Plucked from the fire. Lydia, Ayana, Emmett, Starlet, Giovanni Owen, Shagafer family, Corey, Jordan, Cassandra Graves, Georgette, Norma Reed, Anthony Walker, Julian Walker and family, Elijah Echo, Don Cosby, Lee McGee, Maria Rice, Patrick Hinton, Deacon Isabel Roberts, James, we got two James, Lorraine Rogers, Beverly Davis, Grace Appleby, Michael Moore, Vianza Appleby, Mario French, Romario French, Pastor Teal, Leonie Walker, Tracy Sisko, Lee Mullins, Marlene Franklin Brown, Donna, Jean Goldsby, Wright Family, Karen and Charles Thomas, Elvis, C.J. Nash III, Ashley Family, Francisco, Harris Family, Regina, Ann Filbert, Linda McCall, Lucinda Downer, Paulette Redwood, Doral Anderson, Indy Grant, Grant Family, Lloyd Ta Shackleford, Moore family, Michael, Yvonne, Dennis, Malcolm Bell, Ed Hogan, Harry Durham, Gigi Hill, Keith Thomas. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come right now, Lord, with our hearts and minds stayed on you. We know there is no other that we can go to. We know there's nothing that we can do on our own accord but to look to you, the author and the finish of our faith. I lift up to you now, God, these people that I've just named and mentioned. I lift them up to you, Lord God, so that you can do a new thing for them, a fresh anointing of the Spirit of God. Lord God, we declare right now that they've been loosed from anything that binds them. We speak over them new job and opportunities, new housing, Father God, new medical situations, Lord God, healing in the matchless name of Jesus. You are the doctor in the in the doc in the in the sick room, Father God, and you have never lost a patient. Dear God, we just thank you right now for all that you're doing. We bind anything the enemy tries to do. We just worship you right now, God, in spirit and in truth. We thank you for how you're moving. We declare right now it's a new day. We take back the territory, Lord God. And for those who are not saved, who have not truly confessed, I declare right now, God, by your spirit, you will move upon them and they will hear your voice and right now repent and confess that they too can have everlasting life with you in heaven. Thank you for this time that we've had to with you, Father God. We pray for those that need healing from COVID, Lord God. We pray for this country as it heals, Lord God, as things come back cohesively, Father God. We look to you, Lord God. You know all things. We keep our hands in your hands. We thank you for this time, Lord God, that we've had in your word. Bless your people, I pray, in the matchless name of Jesus. And we'll be so careful, Lord God, to give you the praise. And it's in Jesus' holy and matchless name I pray on today. Be blessed, children of God. Be the light that you've been called to be. Don't hide your light under the bushel. And know that God sees all. When man goes left or right to see if they can get away with something, God says, look up because your redemption cometh near. Bless you. Remember now, plucked from the fire. Be safe, be blessed. In Jesus' name, see you next Thursday. Bye-bye.